We are now just 90 days away from the Iowa caucuses. None of the Democratic presidential candidates held public events there today, but they were busy in other states. Hawaii Congresswoman Tulsi Gabbard was in New Hampshire, where she officially filed for the state's primary. And Senator Kamala Harris also had her New Hampshire director file for her on Tuesday. For more on this, let's bring in CBSN political reporter Caitlin Huey Burns. Caitlin, you have been here, there, and everywhere <laughs> before we get to <laughs> Iowa. Um, let me ask you about Julian Castro laying off staff in New Hampshire and mm -hmm. South Carolina. So what's he doing instead, and do we have any indication of when he'll file in New Hampshire? Well, we know that the Castro campaign has been uh, feeling the crunch. Remember, he just went through a fundraising push saying that he needed to raise $800,000 by the end end of the month last month in order to stay in this race. They reached that goal at the last minute, but his campaign uh, is reshuffling a little bit here to focus on Iowa. And he's not the only one. Kamala Harris uh, laid off her field staff in New Hampshire. She is going all in on Iowa. And that's something that we're seeing this cycle. At this time, candidates and campaigns are trying to reassess where they are, especially with polls coming out, with these debate requirements, uh, with the fundraising requirements to make the debate, uh, to be able to stay in this race, you have to have money, you have to have the grassroots organizations, and you have to have, um, you know, the poll numbers to get on the debate stage. And so a lot of these candidates are trying to figure out how they can deploy resources to Iowa, because they know Iowa, this cycle, perhaps more than others in recent memory, is really going to play a role in shaping this field. Uh, we have seen in the past other campaigns, John McCain, John Kerry, uh, went through at this period of time similar kind of rebuilding or necessary restructuring. Uh, and it ended up paying off for them. Um, so it sometimes is, it works. Sometimes it works. But in this case, there are so many other candidates mm. that it's hard to keep making your case to voters uh, why you don't have these resources and these other campaigns do. I want to ask you about another story that was breaking late last night um, here as I was on the desk. One of Tom Steyer's campaign staffers is accused of stealing voter data from Senator Kamala Harris's campaign. What more are we learning about this and what is Steyer's campaign actually saying? Well, this uh, staffer resigned today and uh, said that uh, working for the South Carolina Democratic Party had access to this voter file and still accidentally did, he said, um, after he left and that when he realized that he did, he said he notified uh, the correct authorities. But uh, the Kamala Harris uh, campaign has now been fundraising off of this. Um, voter data is one of the most valuable elements for a campaign. It's how they uh, reach their voters, how they grow their database and grow, try to cultivate support. Uh, so this is something that is really a, a key part of a campaign. And so we're also against the backdrop of, of data breaches and uh, questions about uh, election interference. Uh, this is something that campaigns are really conscious of and is a really big deal. Continue to follow it. Meantime, Joe Biden is getting some attention because of a conference call with fundraisers where his campaign manager said, quote, we're the one campaign that does not have to win Iowa. I mean, that's a pretty yeah. eye-popping statement, I think some would say. Um, right. What are we looking at um, for Biden's campaign if they don't actually win in Iowa? Well, they're trying to manage, manage expectations in the two early states, especially Iowa, where we have seen his poll numbers drop, uh, as other candidates like Pete Buttigieg and Elizabeth Warren have been gaining ground there. Uh, the Biden campaign is betting that its diverse coalition, uh, which sets it apart really from all these other candidates. We've talked about the struggles candidates like Pete Buttigieg have with African-American voters. We've talked about other candidates um, struggling to really diversify their support. The Joe Biden campaign figures that they have that going for them. And they are anticipating that they don't have to win Iowa, but can go on to South Carolina. Uh, Nevada goes before that as well and uh, pick up there. Um, what's interesting, too, is that as these campaigns are strategizing about winning these early states, they're, they're, they know that you don't have to win a state to win delegates. But it's really key for momentum. Mm -hmm. So what we're going to be watching then is where Biden places in Iowa. Is mm -hmm. this just setting expectations or is this something uh, that should be more concerning for the campaign? Right, because his placement there could affect people's perceptions of that momentum exactly. that you're talking about. Um, all right, Caitlin, you were in Iowa, did a stellar <laughs> job as always, you and your team and uh, producer Mike Lano. Um, you talked to voters and I wonder what they had to say specifically on this question of electability. We've mm -hmm. been talking a 
lot about that quality. We have, and we've been trying to figure out what that means right. to people. And it really does mean a lot of different things to different people. And some people say, well, I don't know. I just want someone who can defeat Donald Trump. Uh, what I've been finding, though, is how much um, strategizing they're doing. They've become kind of like mini pundits this election cycle, <laughs> yeah. um, guessing what other voters may do. So, um, you know, in other words, saying that I like this candidate, but I'm worried that other voters in other states or other areas uh, may not support this candidate, too. So they're trying to kind of figure out how each other, how other voters are going to behave, which I think is a really interesting dynamic this cycle. And it raises questions for uh, people like Elizabeth Warren, people like Pete Buttigieg. Um, and this is something that Joe Biden has been, again, trying to push forward because we do see in head to head matchups uh, that he is uh, leading, although there's not a national primary right. and uh, those things, you know, are, are difficult to determine at this point in time. All right. Really interesting there uh, in Iowa. Caitlin Huey Burns for us. Caitlin, thank you so much. Thank you.